Each time you get paid, you ask yourself, how would you best allocate this money that will fulfill your present and secure your future? I'm gonna give you six steps, do this when you get paid, that will help you achieve just that. I get paid every Thursday, and as soon as I get paid, I actually follow these exact six steps. The first thing you do is allocate 50% for essentials. Essentials are rent, transportation, healthcare, food, medical, all of that. Now you may ask, why 50%? As a rule of thumb, your rent should be 30% of your salary. And the other 20%, it's just to take care of uh, the rest of the essentials. I do agree, depending on where you live, it could be 60% or could be 40%, but 50% is an ideal amount. The next step, you have to start a rainy day fund. Now you may ask why you need to start a rainy day fund. Now, if you are working for somebody else, you should have at least six months worth of salary saved up. If you are a self-employed person or you're running a business, that percentage or amount should be nine months worth. What if you lose a job for a reason or your business just suddenly faced a downfall? You gotta have enough money saved up so they can survive through the journey. Put that aside, you may also face unexpected situations like things break down at home, like you know the, the TV stopped working or the fridge stopped working or your transportation, the vehicle broke down and you need to change the gearbox. And it's better to actually use the saved money rather than use the credit card. The next step is as soon as you get paid, you need to allocate some money to actually pay the debts off. You might have multiple debts, credit card debts, personal loan, a car loan, or mortgage. Now there are two ways to tackle these debts. One is snowball method, another one is avalanche method. Regardless which one you use, it is extremely important that you maintain the minimum payment that you have to make for each debt because missing one of them might impact your credit score. In the future, if you have a plan to buy a house, get a loan for investment, you want to keep your credit score high. Now coming back to the methods, the snowball method is actually focuses on debt balance. You will pick the smallest loan and start making extra payment to pay that off. As soon as that paid off, you move to the, the loan that has the lowest balance again. The way the Avalanche method works, it focuses on highest interest. You might have multiple loans, you just pick the one that has highest interest rate, you literally make extra payment to pay that off first. As soon as that's paid off, you go to the next loan that has the highest interest rate. I actually prefer the snowball method because as soon as you pay one off, it has a psychological impact. You feel like you are actually progressing, you're moving forward. So one is paid off one loan, so that disappears and you only have like three loans left rather than four. Regardless which method you use, just use the one that works for your lifestyle and what's your end goal. As step four and five, it's about investing in your future. Now step four is, as soon as you get paid, you get a portion of that money and invest in an index fund or ETF. If you are in Australia, England or America, you can always invest in S&P 500 or in Australia, you can do ASX 200. Investing in index fund is basically utilizing the benefit of compounding interest. Warren Buffett is actually made his entire money, entire wealth, utilizing the compounding interest. You should actually start investing in the ETF as early as possible because if you just invest a little bit of money every single month in 10 or 20 and 30 years, you will get a massive amount of chunk. Let me show you. Let's say you are starting an index fund with the initial deposit of $1,000. So you're depositing $1,000 every single month for the next 30 years. If you start from the age of 30, when you turn to 60, you will have $1.5 million plus some change sitting in your account. If you start, let's say 10 years later, let's say if you start at the age of 40, if you do the same thing, like $1,000 initial deposit, and then $1,000 every single month uh, for the next 20 years from the age of uh, 40 to 60, when you turn 60, you'll have $593,000. Now you can see that starting the investment just at the age of 30 versus at the age of 40 is almost a million dollar difference. The next step is contributing to your future self, to your retirement fund. If you are in UK, there is something called workplace pension. If you're in America, they have 401k. If you are in Canada, they have something called RRSPs. If you are in Australia, it's called superannuation. Superannuation is basically whatever an employee makes in a year, a percentage of that, the employer transfer it to a bank account nominated by the employee. 
And at the moment, 2024, that percentage is 11%. Every year, the employer transfers that amount to an index fund that grows in compounding interest. So when the employee retires, they will have full access to that retirement fund. What I am saying is, on top of that amount that employer is contributing, that 11%, contribute a little bit more on top of that. You will be surprised just investing a little bit of money on top of that, how big that becomes at retirement. Let me show you. Let's say your age is 30 and your yearly income is $80,000 before tax. And your retirement balance at the moment is $80,000. Just making $1,000 extra per year, at the time of retirement, you're going to get $54,300 extra from your retirement fund and you're going to save $345 from tax every single year you invest $1,000. What are you looking at here? You are actually investing $655 because out of $345, you're actually getting back from tax. Now, if you retire at the age of 67, you're actually only investing a total of $24,235. But you are getting $54,300, which is more than double. The final step, number six, is basically save for the next future plan. You might have a wedding coming up or uh, you have a vacation planned or just you want to save money as a down payment for the next house. It's really important that you get a portion of the money once you get paid and transfer it to a separate bank account for this exact reason. So when the time comes, you have enough money saved up to support it. Before you take any of these steps, especially a step four to six, Consider the opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is basically what you give up to choose an option over another. You might have a different perspective. You might want to open a business or you want to pay off your student loan or you want to just start investing and that's what you want to continue. Or if you have a mortgage, you want to pay that off quickly. What are you going to do? That depends on your life goals, your income level and how much you risk you want to take. So please analyze your opportunity cost and what do you want to do, what's your goal, and adjust the steps accordingly. If this is your first time here, my name is Minaj Mishuk. I started this YouTube channel to help people live a happy, wealthy, and productive life. Make sure you subscribe so that I can help you too. If you found any value out of this video, please hit the like button. Don't forget to explore the clickable links on the screen. You might find something useful you want to click on. I do really thank you for watching this video. Keep watching guys and I will see you in the next video.